Here we go again. Hey guys, welcome back. At this point, I don't even think Halo Infinite's a game, to be quite honest. I'm pretty sure it's just some weird marketing ploy by 343 to sell Mega Bloks figures. Starting to get a bit tired of this, to be honest. Anyway, yesterday we had yet another Halo Infinite Mega Bloks toy leak, courtesy of Mega Bloks News and Timothy Jones. An Elite Ultra, two Spartans, a Marine, and two other figures. A Spartan and a Brute Warlord. Now, I've separated these two figures out because they actually leaked like a month and a half ago, and I wasn't able to release the video that I'd made covering them because Mega Bloks were asking people to remove the pictures of them, and I didn't want to risk a copyright strike, to put it quite frank. However, it seems that they aren't doing that anymore, so I'm going to analyse the new figures first, and then at the end, I'll have the analysis for the two figures from the other video. Capiche? Capiche. Let's get started. First off, we have an Elite Ultra wielding a Plasma Repeater. Now, the design of the Ultra is definitely Reach inspired, quite clearly, but it's not identical to Reach's. The overall shape of the helmet is definitely different, the body is much more Halo 3 styled as opposed to Reach styled, and the sort of ornate detailing on the plating looks to be far more Forerunner inspired compared to the detailing on the Reach Ultra which is a lot curvier and more rounded which isn't particularly Forerunner. The helmet looks a bit weird, honestly, but I'm a massive fan of the new chest plate. I loved Halo 3's chest armor for the Elites, and I wasn't a big fan of Reacher's, so seeing the helmet that I loved from Reach, albeit a bit different, combined with the chest that I absolutely loved from Halo 3, is pretty dope, not gonna lie. Then, there's the Plasma Repeater, which looks to be pretty much identical to Reacher's, or at least as identical as a Mega Bloks Plasma Repeater could ever be to the game version. Now, I was never a big fan of the Repeater, I'm a Plasma Rifle stan until I die, but honestly, I'll take the repeater any day of the goddamn week over the Storm Rifle. Now, I know what most of you are thinking right now, and trust me, I'm thinking the same thing. Playable Elites? Maybe? Please? Obviously, this is just an Elite figure. There's nothing about this that either confirms nor denies Playable Elites. But a man can dream. In fact, I'm pretty sure the entire damn Halo community is dreaming for that right now. Anyways, moving on to the Spartans, let's start off with the real stinger. Spartan Mark 7. Now, we all assumed that the redesigned, classic-looking armor in Halo Infinite was going to be Gen 3. I mean, Chief's armor literally is Gen 3, it says so in his BIOS. But maybe it's more than just Gen 3. By the looks of it, all the armor variants in this game could be variants of the Gen 3 Mark 7 platform which means the Mjolnir platform as a whole has seen some massive changes since Halo 5. Now, unlike Gen 3, Mark 7 isn't actually new at all. It was worn by the only Black Ops Spartan 2, Naomi 010, and in October of 2558, around the same time as Halo 5, it was being used as a test bed for the Gen 3 platform. So, there's already ties between both the Gen 3 platform and Mark 7, so honestly, if Gen 3 Mark 7 was the armor in this game, it wouldn't surprise me at all. As for the Mega Block Spartan, again, this isn't actually the first time that we've seen this Spartan. Back in February, when we had all of those toy reveals at New York Toy Fair, we saw a full-size version of it there, and besides the armor plates, this Mega Bloks Mark 7 looks pretty much identical to it. The colour's interesting as well, it almost looks like a painting mistake, but I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it's indication that Infinite is going to have super in-depth colour customization for the first time in Halo's history, giving us the ability to colour our Spartan via armour piece, as opposed to just doing primary, secondary and tertiary colours. Honestly, I really hope so. That's a really, really cool idea that I had never really thought of before, and I've never seen anybody mention it, but now that I think of it, being able to colour each armour piece individually would be really, really cool, so fingers crossed that this isn't a painting mistake. Then, there's the weird elephant in the room. This new weapon. Now, honestly, to me, this thing looks so ambiguous right now that it could be just about anything. I've seen some people say that it looks like a saw redesign, or a human carbine, or another rifle of some sort, or a drum-fed shotgun. Honestly, right now, it could be any or none of those, because, like I said, 
it's really ambiguous. So I literally just finished recording this video and I go on Reddit and this is what I see. Um, a schematic for a Halo nerf gun that was released a short while ago. Um, I don't know when exactly, no one could really pinpoint when, but a short while ago that looks very, very, very similar to this ambiguous shotgun looking thing. It even has the foregrip and the drum barrel thing as well to feed the shells on the drum and also on the dust cover. It says 12 gauge, so pretty sure it's a shotgun. Um, it's a semi-automatic shotgun by the looks of it because there's no pump. Um, so I guess this is a new type of shotgun that we're going to be seeing in Halo Infinite. I'm looking forward to seeing what this thing actually does. Our second Spartan, Spartan Recon, gives us our first look at Infinite's Recon helmet, which sadly still appears to be the Gen 2 Recon design. Really, really not a fan myself. Um, Gen 1 just looks so, so, so much better if you ask me. Um, and the colours of this Spartan are pretty ugly as well, but that's not exactly a bad thing, we can change those. But the colours themselves, as ugly as they might be, might confirm my earlier theory about deeper colour customization, given that the forearms and lower legs are coloured differently. However, on the bright side, the chest armour looks pretty damn cool on this Spartan, and very, very reach inspired. I love the pouches and the combat knife, just a big fan of that overall. Silver linings, I guess. As for the weapon, it's just the MA40, Halo Infinite's new assault rifle, so nothing new to see there. And our final fully, fully new model for today is the Marine Sniper. Now, sadly, it appears that the Sniper itself is just the Halo 5 one, which I'm really, really not a fan of. Not even slightly. However, on the bright side, the design of the Marine herself I absolutely adore. It looks to be a combination of Halo 2 Anniversary's Marines, which I love so much, they're my second favourite in the entire franchise, just behind Halo CE's original ones, and then also a bit of Reacher's Gunganeer Army Trooper shoulders thrown in there as well. The shoulders kind of look like Reacher's Gunganeer shoulders. Um, the camo BDU with sniper round bandoliers and a soft case on the thighs looks incredible, but my favourite bit overall has to be the chest plate. Again, I absolutely loved Halo 2 Anniversary's take on the Marines, and this chest plate appears to be directly inspired by them. In fact, the Marine overall appears to be a more militarized version of the Halo 2 Anniversary Marines, which I am absolutely in love with. Okay, now I'm going to pass you over to April, me, to briefly analyze the Spartan Gunganeer and Brute Warrior. So, the Brute. As you can see, he is very much in banished colours. Now, I know there are a few people after that last video about the Hunter who were saying, oh, it could just be a grey and red Hunter, it doesn't have to be banished. Yeah, you're not wrong, it could be, but at the same time, why would 343 give a Covenant faction or give just a Covenant species the exact same colour scheme as the banished and not make them a part of the banished? That, to me, just doesn't compute. It makes no sense. And again, this isn't the only evidence that we have for the Banished being an infinite. We had the powerful and ruthless alien faction tease from Shadows of Reach. We then had the Banished Hunter, and now we've got this Brute Warrior. And yeah, again, just to reiterate, the colour scheme of this Brute is very similar to not only existing Banished Brutes that we've seen in Halo Wars 2, but also existing Banished Brute Mega Bloks figures. Like, the colour scheme in this Banished Mega Bloks figure is so similar to the one that we got released today. So, I mean, come on. I think the evidence is there. As you can see, this brute is holding what looks to be a completely new weapon. Now, if you ask me, it looks a little bit like a railgun and also a little bit like a brute shot. So it has the sort of bladed hilt slash handle thing of the brute shot at the back. And then the barrel to me looks kind of like a railgun or some sort of coil gun or something. So what this weapon is, I mean, God knows. Maybe it is a like a banished railgun. Maybe it's a banished brute shot, although it doesn't look like the ones in Halo Wars 2. Maybe it's the two combined together, or maybe it's just something completely new. Who knows? Either way, though, the brute in particular looks so damn good. Like, if this ends up being legit, then I'm so hyped. And then we have Spartan Gunganeer. Now, this, by the looks of it, is literally just a Reach Spartan. So, again, the Halo Infinite logo on the box could very well be a misprint. This could be like an early printing of the box art or something. So, again, take it with a grain of salt. That said, though, if you remember back to like 2018, Chris Lee did say that if you're a fan of Reach's customization, then you'll be happy with Halo Infinite. So, I mean, who knows? Either way, if this is any indication of what Infinite's customization system is going to be like, then boy, oh, we are in for a treat. 
But that isn't all. As you can see, this Spartan Gunganir is holding what looks to be another new weapon. This one, kinda to me, looks a bit like a mauler, crossed over with a nail gun, kind of? Like, it's got the cylinder in the middle of the mauler and sort of like the overall shape, but then also the overall shape of a nail gun and also that like foregrip thing at the front below the barrel of a nail gun. I don't know, maybe it's some sort of like revolver or like handheld grenade launcher or something? That cylinder in the middle definitely suggests that it fires big rounds, so... I don't know. Either way, it looks to be something very new that we haven't seen even remotely before. Thanks, me from two months ago. So, a nail gun, a weird carbine LMG shotgun thing, recon, my beloved Gunganir, and Banished Confirmed. As incredibly hype as all of this is, the fact that this is all being revealed via Mega Bloks leaks is just so, so unbelievably disappointing. Just imagine how much more hype this all would be if it was getting revealed in a trailer, or teased in a teaser trailer, or shown to us for the first time in a beta. The marketing for this game so far has been absolutely non-existent, and to be honest, it's just kind of getting annoying now. Like, I know we're potentially less, less than a month, maybe, away from the big reveal, but I'm sorry, the clock's ticking, the game is coming out in, like, a maximum of, what, six months, absolute maximum and we still know next to nothing about it. Most of what we know is from Mega Bloks leaks, which is... <sighs> it's getting tiring, dude. It's getting real tiring. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today, fellas. Um, I've got a proper new video coming out in the next few days, so keep a look out for that one. I think you're going to love it. Uh, I really do appreciate all the support on the channel lately. It means a lot to me that we're getting this much support, and Halo Infinite marketing hasn't even kicked off yet, so... Again, I really appreciate everyone watching the videos, checking them out, and hopefully loving them. So, yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys. I love you all, and I'll catch you in the next one.